Hey guys, welcome to Fat Quarter Shop Livestream. I'm Kimberly Jolly. Today is June 12, 2020. Super, super excited to be here with you today. I have some free stuff to show you and um, some other sew alongs. And then Kevin's gonna join me, so that's super exciting. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start with Jelly Snowflake. This is gonna be our new sew along. It starts July 2nd. It's a completely free pattern. All you need, it's a mist. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, we can't show you that. <laughs> we'll blur it out later. We'll blur it out later. Oops. Oh my gosh, y'all are gonna send me hate mail because it's a mystery. Oh, I forgot. So that's a mystery quilt along. Oops. <laughs> um, so you just need one jelly roll, two and a half yards background, five eighths yard binding. It is going to start on July 2nd and the videos that I'm gonna be doing on that are gonna be really detailed, just like Mary Making Mini. If you're looking for something to sew this weekend that's free, the Mary Making Mini pattern is um, on our website from last year. So that is one thing that's coming up. The other thing that we've been working on is we're doing a Be Patriotic Sew Along, which uses the Vintage Christmas Book. You can make it in a large size or a small size. And here is Lori Holt's quilt. My quilt is at home and next week in the live stream, what we're gonna be doing is I'm going to show you how to put the Rick Rack in your binding. And so we're gonna actually, sh I'm gonna actually sew on next week's live stream. Ooh, ooh. So super exciting. So I will show you the quilt. And so what she's done with this sew along is taking it from Christmas colors to July 4th colors so that you can have something different in your house and it's a way to use the book. You know, we've all got the book. So um, we've got a fabric requirement sheet. So that's super fun. So those are two things that we've been working on. Let me know if y'all have any questions before I move to the next thing. All right, uh, <laughs> Peach said, uh, everyone pretend we didn't see that. Oh exactly. my gosh. Nobody saw it, um, but we'll be able to blur it after the fact. So. Only if you were here at the beginning will you have seen it. Lily um, was supposed to remind me. I'm, I'm going to blame Lily. That was my fault. No, you're right. No, it's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> okay. Um, so we uh, right now we had several new YouTube members join right before our live stream, so I'm going to shout them out real quick. Uh, we have a new member, Ashley Hudges. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you. And new YouTube member, Low302. Welcome, Low. And new member, Elizabeth Wooling hyman Welcome, Elizabeth. Yay. Okay, and then we have a question from Sharon Berkemeyer. Will you get any more of the Be Patriotic bundles? Yes, around June 15th to June 20th, I'm supposed to receive more of the fabric. I'm only short on two SKUs, and Riley Blake is waiting on a shipment. So as soon as I get those, I'm going to be recutting them. And we're going to kind of keep those in stock um, continually. So I'm hoping to keep that in stock for about a year. It's just um, fabric delivery is a little slow right now. All right. Uh, Susan Geisler says, love your shirt, Kimberly. Thank you. And G. Wena Dottie says, will March to Noel jelly roll work for the quilt along that is secret starting soon? Yes, any jelly roll will work. In fact, you only need 14 strips. So you're gonna have a ton left over that you can do a scrappy binding with or you can put on your back. Um, I'm actually doing the step outs. That's what I did yesterday for the video, which is, you know, prepping for the video. And it's super easy. It's probably a quilt you could make in a day. Like I could have finished the whole quilt yesterday. I just got sidetracked around noon, um, which happens. All right. Um, and we have another new YouTube member, Sharon Duvelis. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Yay. All right. Uh, and Troy Barnes said, hi, Lily, missed you on the floss tube this week. Yeah, I was Aww. out of town, but Ashley did an amazing job. So I'm super proud of Ashley for doing that. Okay, and from Chris Zamora, where do we go to find all this information for fabric requirements? Go to the Jolly Jabber, which is our blog. So if you're on our website, just click on blog and everything is on there and you can search and there's mm -hmm. different um, categories you can go by. Yep, yep. And we'll make sure to give you guys a link for that in the comments right now. So I wanted to go back and talk about uh, our charity quilts along. So this is our eighth year doing this. We raise money for charity every year. This year we said if we got to $50,000 that Kevin would do a Q&A uh, and we're at 48,615. So even though we didn't do the 50 and we already announced previous to this that we instead of giving 10,000 are gonna give 20,000 
So um, that is great. Um, and if we get to 55,000 by Monday, I'm gonna donate 25,000. So um, oh my gosh. that is a free pattern. The pattern is behind me. We have kits available, but you don't have to use our kit. It's really meant to do be a free pattern where you um, just donate. You can donate directly to Make-A-Wish. And if you are interested in cross stitch, this is also free and we're asking for a donation for this also. So it's just a way for us to give back in the quilting community. And we thank all of you for all of the money that you have donated because we couldn't do this without you guys. So I'm gonna bring Kevin on and we're gonna ask some questions. Yay, go Kevin. Woo! Y'all be nice to him. <laughs> so welcome Kevin to the live stream. All right. Um, so we actually have a few questions that were submitted before the fact, so I'm gonna start with those. Okay. Um, and then I'll start taking the questions that we start getting live as they roll in. Um, so first question was from Kelly Goddard. Kevin, what is your favorite thing about Kimberly? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, I would say maybe. <laughs> maybe. I guess uh, her passion for everything. She's Aww. very passionate about what she does and and life and you know she only does everything a hundred percent all the way all the time mm -hmm. so um, you know she's uh, not lazy she doesn't sp you know she doesn't really spend a lot of downtime besides quilting or sewing or anything like that so she's very um, into everything that she's doing oh that's so sweet Okay, next mm -hmm. question from Deb Keller. So glad to finally meet you. What type of work did you do before opening Fat Quarter Shop? Um, I was a financial analyst for Dell Computer. Um, so I used to do exciting things like build financial models oh. <laughs> for finance and credit uh, companies. So um, yeah, I used to play with Excel spreadsheets all day. Oh, that's, that sounds very fun. <laughs> Okay, from Life So Crazy, when y'all when y'all started Fat Quarter Shop, did you think it would become as big of a company as it is now? Uh, no way. Um, uh, every day is exciting, I would say. Um, you know, certainly we started in our home, and then um, <clears throat> you know we moved out and we moved to a bigger spot, and then a bigger spot, and then a bigger spot, and a bigger spot. So um, uh, you know, I never take it for granted. So I never expected us to get this big. I never expect us to get to another level or another level. Um, sometimes you get, you know, a little complacent, like, oh, I, we've got somewhere. I'm just going to assume we're going to get to the next level, but I never assume that. It's not given, and um, if you don't stop working, uh, or if you stop working, you'll, you know, it won't, you won't get there. So, um, no, not at all, and, and I appreciate each, each, each move and each step. Okay, from Roxy2, your company is awesome. What motivates you to keep going each day? Um, I think it's all internal, mostly, and I think the same for her. Um, you know, if neither of us had this business, we would still be working another job 80 hours a week, um, seven days a week doing something else. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think both of us would probably be doing something fairly independent because I like to make my own decisions and so does she. <laughs> and I don't, <laughs> I want to do what I want and so does she. So um, uh, I think we would be uh, doing something somewhere that was, you know, pretty ambitious. Yeah. I fully believe that as well. <laughs> From Sue Cleek, what do you like or like to do when you are off work? Yes, I know it's not much time, yeah. but still. Um, not too much. I, do, I don't spend much time doing other things. <laughs> um, you know, obviously spend time with my kids and family is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And then, um, uh, I play the guitar, I'm very interested in guitars and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that would be the main thing. Uh, from Becky B, with Kimberly being a quilter and cross-stitcher, did you envision a nice quiet life when you got married? <laughs> no, because I know her. <laughs> <laughs> and I know me and um, you know we were never going to be you know working eight to five and going home at the end of the day and watching TV at night that was never going to happen so um, no not at all <laughs> oh, I love that 
All right, from D. Flakelar, of all the quilts Kimberly has made over the years, which is your favorite? Uh, she made me one uh, before we even got married that was a big, uh, huge a burnt orange one because I went to the University of Texas, so it was okay. like a big UT quilt. Uh -huh. And um, I still have it in my office and I use it all the time. Oh my God. I can bring it next week and show y'all. Yeah. Okay. I made it out of two inch squares and um, there's no pattern. And I can't give a pattern because it's probably trademarked. I just made it for personal, but I'll bring it next week mm -hmm. if he lets me borrow it. All right. Um, from Ashley Mass. Kevin, have you ever tried your hand at piecing a quilt off? Also, thank you for all your generosity. Your company is such a pleasure to do business with, and the model is wonderful. I heart, 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 fat quarter shop and Friday live streams. So have you tried piecing a quilt? Uh, I haven't actually sat behind a sewing machine and done it, but um, I'm fairly certain I could do it. I mean, you know, after all these years, I know a lot about it, and, um, you know, I would... I'm fairly certain I would be able to follow the directions pretty easily and, mm -hmm. and do all that kind of stuff. So, uh -huh. um, he does pull triangle paper sometimes. Yeah, hey. <laughs> he's one of the jolly rippers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was the original one. Oh, and um, you know, I've done most stuff besides sitting behind the sewing machine, probably. Okay, that's really cool. Um, from Love Pugs, hi Carolyn from California. What was your reaction when Kimberly proposed to start an online quilt shop? And she's got more questions, but I'll, I'll stop there for now. <laughs> um, um, it was sort of weird because she had another job at the time. And so I wasn't sure, you know, if it was a hobby or if she was, you know, what would come of it, you know, because I think my assumption was she would get another job. Um, because her, she was about to get laid off. The company she worked for was not doing well, and uh -huh. so it was sort of a given that she was about to get laid off. Okay. So, um, you know, I assume she get another job, and maybe she did too. I mean, I'm, I'm sure she didn't expect to be where we are now. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but no, when she started it, it was, you know, it was quickly, you know, it's 100% all the time. So, I mean, it was quickly going, you know, super fast, and within, a, week or two i was closing envelopes and shipping labels and all that kind of stuff yeah oh my gosh it's so exciting okay the next question uh when did you join in to help so i guess you did just answer that um are you now a full-time worker in the fat quarter shop family <laughs> <laughs> that's just funny because i'm more than full time <laughs> Maybe double time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd say triple. <laughs> How many years did it take for you to start with us? I can't even, like one, two, probably one. Uh, I think it was more like two. Maybe one and a half. Well, it was, yeah, but it was like when I worked at my previous job, I would work that job during the day and then I would do that quarter shop at night. So, like when I quit my job, my hours didn't go down. I just had one, one job instead of two. Uh, oh, they also had some kind words. Uh, in my opinion, the online shop has the best interface out there. Items are easy to find, easy to order, easy to pre-order. My orders have never been incomplete or inaccurate. Appreciate you giving into the pressure to put an appearance. <laughs> so next question from Joanna Vasquez. Kimberly mentions often how many quilts are in your home. Do you ever feel like there are too many quilts around? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, they're beautiful and they're nice and, um, I mean, it's what we do. So, I mean, I love it and um, no, not at all. Oh, yay. All right, from Laurel Pie and Tech. Thank you, Kevin, for allowing us to bombard you with questions. Are you and Kimberly originally from Texas or as they say, did you get here as fast as you could? Uh, I grew up in Houston. Uh, well, actually, I grew up in Illinois for a long time until I was about 10. Oh. And then I moved to Houston. And then I grew up there, went to high school there. and then school in Austin and back to Houston and then to Austin. So, um, yeah, I would say Houston's where I grew up mostly. So yes, I'm from Texas. And I'm from Austin. I actually grew up about 10 minutes from where I'm sitting right now. So I didn't <laughs> go very far. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Joan Geisek, my question, what do you consider your highest accomplishment so far? Um, and she also says, and I have to add this, shy people unite at home by ourselves. 
Yes, that's true. <laughs> or in your office. Or that's in your true. office. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, probably that um, uh, we have a successful company that has good integrity, good character, um, means a lot to a lot of people. And um, certainly the pride that other people put into it, our employees, people in the warehouse, all that kind of stuff is really important. And um, I appreciate that a lot. And um, you know, like what Kimberly does, the positivity, the things that we do that are, you know, we, I feel like we contribute to a positive everything in the world. I know that sounds cheesy, but uh, that's sort of the way I feel about it. And um, uh, we will always run a company that's positive and does the right thing like that. As long as I'm here and she's here, that won't change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, from Shelly Edwards, are there quilters, cross stitchers, or other crafters in your family before you married Kimberly? Um, a little bit. My mother is a sewer, oh. and so all growing up, she would sew things like Halloween costumes and um, and uh, uh, you know, just general clothes for my sisters. I don't think she made anything for me. Oh, <laughs> well, so every year at Christmas, she still has the stockings from when, like 40 years ago when they were babies. Yep. She still has all the stockings mm -hmm. that she made and she doesn't use them, but they're out for decor. Cause you know, they're older. She doesn't want to get them messed up, but they're really nice. Yeah, and when I was a kid, I used to go to, with her all the time to like Joanne Fabrics. And so, you know, all the, um, you know, all the patterns and all that kind of stuff, very familiar. It wasn't like I just noticed those when I got here. I had seen those plenty of times when I was a kid. Yes. <laughs> okay, from Jamie M, given the fact that you have such a crafty wife, do you or have you been tempted to do anything yourself? Crafty? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't um, have much to add there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, lots of people want to know, how did you guys meet? You can answer that. <laughs> oh, I thought he was cute and I stalked him. So there you go. Oh, that's the way it happens. That's great. Um, D. Johnson, thank you for all you do. What do you enjoy doing the most at Fat Quarter Shop? Um, the day-to-day -day stuff and, um, you know, being able to be independent, make our own decisions, control everything. <laughs> if it was up to us, we would we do our best to control pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, the excitement of it all. Like I said, I, I, I don't want to work eight to five in an office and I've done that and I didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we get to do all kinds of exciting things. If we have an idea, we do it. And, um, you know, we obviously bounce it off people and make sure it's you know, not a mess and all that kind of stuff, but um, um, that's the excitement. I can do whatever I want. I can dress like this every day to work. <laughs> <laughs> all right, from Wanda Simpson, thank you guys for making your business a platform for Make-A-Wish Foundation. How did you guys get started on that? Uh, well, a lot of the credit or most of the credit goes to Jocelyn. Oh, Jocelyn. She's awesome. She's uh, been with us for a long time and we love her. And um, 13 years. Yes, we owe a lot to her. Aww. She was the very first marketing hire ever. Yep. Yep, so she was the first person to do most of the stuff that I did. Uh, <laughs> like the images, you know, website images uh -huh. and photos and, you know, all the old sort of archaic things the way we used to do it. Um, <laughs> but she's, uh, I believe it was her idea, right? It was right? absolutely her it idea. It was her idea and mm. she brought it up and we said that would be awesome. And we've done a couple different charities, but the Make-A-Wish one has been really rewarding and it's such a positive, good thing. And we've had nothing but great experience with the people there and everything we've done. So um, very proud to be a part of that. Yeah. From Vicki Robles, Kevin, how is it to help run the business, live with Kimberly and the kids? <laughs> <laughs> and the dog. And the dog. It's no problem at all. I mean, we get along great and um, we rarely fight about anything. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, no, it's no problem at all. I know some people that's not the way it is. I mean, if we had separate jobs in sort of separate worlds, I don't, I don't think that would be good. I don't think that would work out because we wouldn't talk to each other probably. Because of the amount of hours we work. Yeah, so I mean, I know I think it's great. I wouldn't want it any other way. 
Okay. Oh. Oh, a few people are asking if they can meet Jocelyn. Yeah. She would come on and ask. Yeah, we can have Jocelyn come on and we can have her talk about Make a Wish and yeah. how she came up with the idea. I'm mm -hmm. sure she's watching, so she'll email me in a little <laughs> bit, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, let us know, Jocelyn. Okay, uh, from Jennifer Foster. Kevin, thank you for being such a good sport. We appreciate you and Kimberly, as well as the Fat Quarter Shop family so much. And she asked, my favorite question to ask, what's your favorite food? Oh my gosh, she always <laughs> asks that. <laughs> <laughs> Steak. Ooh. A good steak is my favorite. How do you like your steak? Medium. Okay. Yes. I do as well. <laughs> From Vicki W., thanks for being so awesome. How do you like working with your wife every day? It's great. Um, I have no issue. I mean, we enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, um, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoy it. I wouldn't want it, like I said, any other way. Oh. From Julia Cold, hi Kevin, nice to put a face to the name. Just want to say thank you for being you and helping create Fat Quarter Shop. Kimberly says you are shy, but the precision of your work ethic is amazing. Customer first is not seen very much today and makes Fat Quarter Shop so special. You and Kimberly make an exceptional team. Thank you so much. Question, do each of you have specific duties and where do your duties combine? Um, well, Kimberly's like the creative force behind almost everything. And um, she obviously does stuff like this. Awesome, this is not me being here. <laughs> I'm totally <laughs> uncomfortable being here. Oh, you're um, doing great. But um, uh, I probably run more of the day-to-day -day stuff. Obviously, all the website, IT stuff, all the warehouse stuff, you know, I deal with a lot of customer service questions and, you know, problems and, and, um, but you know the great thing about what we do in our relationship is we we um, you know we're both involved in each other's pieces. I mean it's not like we're totally on our own world. So you know she has input into e anything and everything that I do, and I have input in anything and everything that she does. And um, uh, I respect her opinion about everything, and she respects mine. That doesn't mean we always accept it or, or agree with it but um, and also the great thing too is we obviously we make decisions on our own but at the same time there are things I have to do or say or decide and I'll say here's my decision but I need to talk to Kimberly because I know that she'll care and she's the same way she'll say um, you know maybe this is not ordinarily something I would ask him or or you know, someone else might not think I care, but she'll say, I, Kevin will, he wants input on, he'll want to input, uh, give input on this. And so she'll ask me. And we do, the one thing that we do together always is buy fabric. Yeah, we do 100% of the buying. Um, Kevin is better at picking fabric sometimes than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I enjoy that too. Um, so, good segue into this question from Catherine Zuber. Uh, they say, hi from O'Fallon, Illinois. Kimberly says, you pick things out together. Do you have a favorite fabric line or designer you like? Uh, oh, my, that's a good question. Yeah. My all-time favorite fabric line is named Blueberry Crop Cake. Oh my god. <laughs> Blackbird Designs. Yeah. Blackbird. Okay. Moto, how old is that? About eight, eight, eight years ago? Yeah. Wow. It was, you know, sort of a blue, gray, you know, male colors. Uh, dark nice. blue and that was my all-time favorite collection that we had wow so would you say they're your fabric favorite fabric designer or? um i don't know if i have one okay do you think okay. i have one i think he has okay i, ha I think he has a favorite theme oh. definitely he loves all halloween fabric so i would say <laughs> that is one thing yes. that he loves to look at halloween fabric yeah, I, I like Halloween fabric, uh -huh. and I get bummed when it doesn't sell well. You know, a particular <laughs> line that I really like, that I think, oh, man, I thought that would do better. <laughs> and, um, you know, she has to step in sometimes and say, we have too much Halloween. And I'll say, no, I like this one. I like this one. we got to buy this one. And uh, sometimes she gives in, and other times yeah, I'll say, yeah, you're right. We probably shouldn't buy that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, question from Diane Cobble. We know Kimberly likes true crime. What do you like to read or watch in your, fav in your free time, and what is your favorite activity with your kids? Uh, favorite activity with our kids would be 
<clears throat> I don't know, just playing around with them. Oh. Um, Wrestling? No, I don't wrestle with our kids. <laughs> um, they're, you know, getting t too old for that. But um, obviously it's unfortunate right now that we can't go and do a lot of things, but that would, that's my favorite thing is to go do activities with them, you know, sort of have those life experiences with them. You know, sadly we really can't go on a trip right now or anything mm -hmm. like that, you know, no spring break, no summer vacation, any of that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, just spending time with them, I mean, just, you know, right now they sort of congregate in the, in the living room a lot. And so, you know, it's nice to just go in there and hear them, you know, jibber jabber, and <laughs> see them play around and sometimes fight. All that's enjoyable. Yeah. And what was the other part of your question? Oh, what do you like to read or watch in your free time? Uh, I really don't read anything and I really don't watch anything. <laughs> um, uh, like I said, I like a lot of guitar stuff and, um, uh, I've been on Instagram lately following a, over the pandemic I got bored <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, typically the one thing I would watch is sports I'm a big basketball fan so I'm bummed that you know there's no NBA right now no NBA playoffs so um, mm -hmm. I did get on Instagram okay. and, and sort of take up some of my free time that way yeah Instagram's fun and, and he likes UT football yeah uh, UT football yes uh, from Cindy Jensen, uh, thank you for all you do to keep us all hooked on quilting. Uh, do you have a hobby, and if so, what is it? Uh, it's pretty much just playing the guitar playing and the guitar. learning about, you know, reading, watching anything, uh, anything about it. So, other than that, I really don't have any hobbies. Okay, I'm pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, from Janet Buster, thank you Kevin and Kimberly for all you do for your customers. I can speak for myself and many others when I say you have been a comfort and pro provide an a sense of normality in these uncertain times. The question is, Fat Quarter Shop has Kimberly's style stamped clearly on it. Her quilts, tutorials, she is a trendsetter. What would you say are Kevin's influences other than the great website? That's for me or her? I think that's for both, yeah. Um. I don't know. I mean, at this point, I think a lot of things are a combination. You know, there's a lot of what she does, you know, like this is 100% her and her, her team and you and, you know, the other people we have. Uh -huh. um, but um, I don't know. At this point, I think a lot of it is a combo. I don't know what. So, I mean, I think the website, I mean, the website's 100% his. So any kind of search optimization or like placement of where stuff is on the website, that's all him. I had nothing to do with it. But I mean, the logo is obviously my colors. Um, it's pinker than he wanted it to be 13 <laughs> years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the website, everything on the website is his stamp. I mean, I had nothing to do with any of that. Well, that's not totally true because... But I didn't like put I the work in. Right, but but you know, just like I said, we come up with designs and ideas, and you know, we pretty much know what it's going to be. But before it's final, you know, I show it to her because you know, if she says I hate it, we're going to change it. Yeah. You know, I mean, she has to you know be at least okay with it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean she's going to like all of it, but um, you know, I want her to to you know feel comfortable, or I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aww. From Samantha Ewers, uh, what is your favorite current, current or coming soon fabric line? Uh, coming soon. Um, I like the Nebula collection that we have from Tulip Pink coming. Um, trying to think what else. Um, All Hallows Eve is great, even mm -hmm. though we're already at out of half of it oh my gosh. <laughs> but it's coming back they're reprinting it mm -hmm. and we should have more first or second week of mm -hmm. august Woohoo! yes so um you know i think it sold great yeah. and uh for moda and they are right on top of reprinting that mm -hmm. all right uh from gary garvin good morning i would like to ask kevin is owning a fabric and quilting supply business what you envision for yourself when you got out of high school, and if not, what were your plans? <laughs> Obviously not. I mean, <laughs> you know, life is very strange. Uh, you know, things happen, and you end up in places you never thought you would end up. Mm -hmm. um, out of high school, I'm not sure what I thought I would do. Um, 
Didn't you think you were going to be architecture? Yeah, I was planning to be architecture major in college for oh. a while. And then I went to, uh, like I said, I went to UT and they have an awesome architecture school there. Mm -hmm. And um, I took an architecture elective class when I was a freshman, I believe. Uh -huh. And I loved it. And, um, and then I found out, or actually I went um, to the architecture school one day. I, I met someone who was an architecture major. Mm -hmm. And I went there, and like on the third floor, or the higher floor at UT, at the architecture school, they have like a big room where all the students go in and they do their drafting, you know, their drafting tables and do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the people there were so talented and like artistic, and I was just like, I can't do this. <laughs> These people are far beyond what I could do. And so I quickly was like, yeah, I, I, I gotta find another avenue. Mm -hmm. And so then I, I basically went into the business school and, um, I was I was an accountant for a while, until oh. <laughs> until I became more of a financial person. Got it. Oh. Okay. Um, from Randy Escada, I love Fat Quarter Shop. I am wondering if you and Kimberly are in opposites attract or a we love all the same things kind of couple. Um, work wise, we're the same. Okay. Um, outside of that, we're different. Um, we don't have a lot of the same interests mm -hmm. I would say at all <laughs> <laughs> well we don't both don't like movies mm -mm. oh yeah but mm -hmm. I like true crime he likes sports we like the same food yeah that's important yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay from Sam Cooper what is your favorite color uh, probably navy blue nice um, and they also say thank you for all you do at fat quarter shop how do you like to relax to recharge yourself um just doing nothing uh, you know just I don't do it a lot um, but probably just you know do nothing you know anything to add there <laughs> sleep yeah you know sometimes you just have to sleep yeah and crash a little bit and so that happens <laughs> yeah sleep is great <laughs> um, they also said don't be afraid of us ask Kimberly we don't bite <laughs> <laughs> all right from Tula E. Hubbard, so excited to see Mr. Fat Quarter Shop. I want to know, how do you tell Kimberly no? It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, the funny thing is, is that sometimes she, you know, she's, like I said, she's very passionate, so she believes strongly about, you know, what she wants to do and the ideas and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, um, uh, I mean, I think with our relationship, and she respects me and I respect her, so if she has an idea that I don't like, I just say, no, <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing it, or uh, no, that's a dumb idea, or whatever. And I mean, she doesn't get insulted, and she does the same to me. She just says, no, you know? And like, you know, um, that's why we have such a good relationship. I don't get all, you know, mad and stomp off and, yeah, we don't have time for that. There's no drama in our life. Yeah, we have. We None are of very that. proud of zero drama in our life. <laughs> we make our, you know, Kids. we make an effort to have zero drama here at Fat Quarter Shop and mm -hmm. at work. And um, uh, you know, I think. Oh, what I was going to say was, you know, sometimes she's intimidating to people because she's just like, no, this is what I want to do, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm not intimidated at all. <laughs> so uh, I just say, you know, other people may tell her yes or sort of give in or, and um, I'll just say, no, we're not doing it. <laughs> and uh, sometimes uh, you, I'm sure you know this, but people go to her with things and, and she'll say a, a certain something and then they'll say, I don't think this is a good idea. And so they'll come tell me and then I'll tell her no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was funny. And then I get really mad. <laughs> Not that mad. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. It's like going to mom or dad. One says no, you go to the other one. Yeah. Or one says yes, you go to the other one. Um, okay, from Searles Mercier. Uh, hello, Kimberly and Kevin. Lucinda here from Delaware. How do you keep the fat quarter shop running so smoothly? Uh, well, to me, it doesn't run smoothly most of the time. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's the way, you know, the way I think really so i mean it's a challenge at all times to try to keep it going and moving slowly uh, smoothly every day there's new issues new challenges new things to deal with so 
kind of feel like if it's moving too smoothly, there's an issue. I know that sounds a little crazy, but to me, I feel like if there's not constant pressure in it or anxiety, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. I've, I've just learned that over the years, like, oh, I get too comfortable, there's something wrong. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm not pushing myself hard enough or, or, or we're not working hard enough, we're not doing enough, we need to come up with new ideas. You know, you have to keep pushing and going. And um, I sort of feel like once there's no pressure on me or no anxiety, I need to get with it. <laughs> All right, from Tracy Vasquez, uh, what is your favorite thing about the Fat Quarter Shop? Um, probably what I mentioned earlier, just I'm very proud of the reputation of our company and how we do things and how we treat people. And, um, you know, since the very beginning, I've always said, you know, we're going to treat people right. Um, we're not going to put up with rudeness, you know, harassment, none of that stuff is not going to work here. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'm very proud of the positive um, uh, stuff that we do and, um, you know, that we run a company that, you know, we make our best effort at least to treat our employees fairly and treat them well, uh, respect all of them, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, very proud of that. All right, question here from Connie Kaner. Uh, we all know Kimberly loves her tea. Do you have a drink of choice? Um, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Good choice. Um, I used to not drink any of that stuff. Uh, but now I have to have a Dr. Pepper every day. She says that she sort of gets like a withdrawal if she doesn't have tea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I used, used to not, you know, think that was a little strange or whatever but now if I don't have Dr. Pepper I get a little bit like that mm -hmm. and um, and like I said I, at one point years ago I used to think that you know obviously that wasn't healthy or a proper way to do things but now I'm like <laughs> no, I just need a Dr. Pepper. Yeah I think that's okay. All right um, a lot of people were asking uh, if you will be getting a new pug for your daughter. <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> not happening. Oh, okay. And question from Crafting a Plan Life. Where do you think Fat Quarter Shop will be five or ten years from now? I have no idea. Um, like I said earlier, I don't take anything for granted. So, um, you know, I plan to keep pushing. But, uh, you know, uh, if we're the same company we are, like a if we're the same company we are in five or ten years than we are now, I would be disappointed. And I don't necessarily mean like size or sales or anything like that. I just think you should always be uh, transitioning or migrating, evolving into different stuff and doing different things. Like one of the things I'm very proud about that we do is <clears throat> we do a lot of exclusive new stuff that you can't get other places. Um, you know, I don't want to be the same as other people. I don't want to copy other people. I don't want to, I want to be unique. I want to do different stuff than other people do. Yeah. And um, I think that's something that we've shared since the beginning. And I mean, anyone, you know, lots of people do the same thing. I want to do different stuff and be unique and different. And um, like I said, if we're not doing some neat idea or we don't have something sort of exciting in the pipeline or working on, you know, something's wrong we need to keep we need to come up with something you know all right from Wilma Evans do you find it easy to decide on fabrics to buy yeah we agree on most of the stuff I mean um, whenever we look at fabric we always have like a yes no and a maybe stack and if for whatever reason we can't look at it at the same time um, most of the time we do but uh, if we can't look at it at the same time for whatever reason we'll go ahead and separate them and we never disagree on the yeses um the no's are you know are usually obvious and um the maybes we may discuss and you know you know switch off or um but i would say 90 percent of the time we agree mm -hmm. usually even when the sales reps come in they know what we're going to buy mm -hmm. they yeah. usually they usually show the yeses first <laughs> it's usually sorted and then you know they put the weaker at the bottom and most of them know us and we've known them for a long time so mm -hmm. 
they know what we like and what we're going to do and how we work. And, you know, typically we work fast. Um, you know, sales reps and other companies you hear nightmare stories of them going to shops and showing fabrics and, you know, they have they sit there all day and and it's just a lot of picking and choosing, picking and, choosing and, 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 you know, anxiety over stuff. And, and um, I understand that's how some people work, but that's not how we work. I mean, we may be in and out in an hour, hour and a half, looking at 30 lines and mm -hmm. we're quick to, I mean, it's obvious. To me, it's obvious the yeses and the noes and we only have to discuss a few of the maybes. Mm -hmm. And then give how you know the actual order, which is, I mean, we usually always agree on that too. Usually mm -hmm. the sales reps come and the forms already filled <coughs> out. They just have to put the quantity in because they already know what we're going to buy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes yeah. I feel guilty because some of them come from out of town or you know they're obviously traveling and making a big effort to come see us, and we'll be done in like half an hour, <laughs> and then I'll say, I'll be sort of like, well. I'm, sorry that you know you made a big effort to come and we didn't really meet very long but you know i think they just care if we bought stuff or not or you know it, you know we support them and so um you know i sometimes feel a little guilty about that all right um next question from gwen smith is there one person dead or alive that you would love to meet um i don't know I'd love to meet Michael Jordan. Ooh. Um, trying to think who else. Um, there's lots of guitar players I would like to meet and sit like this with like guitars and be like, how do you do that? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Or how do you make this sound? You know, all that kind of stuff. Or yeah. what, what, like, how do you practice this or that? You know, that kind of stuff is sort of nerdy. And, you know, most guitar players are sort of geeks you know, nerdy gear geeks, <laughs> <clears throat> and I would like that too. So I would not want to know like, okay, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you set that up? Yeah. You know, what strings do you use? How are you setting your amp? You know, all that kind of silly stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, all the details you care about. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, lots of people are asking where in Illinois are you from? Peoria. Peoria, okay. And I had a question here, where did it go? Uh, a few people were wondering how long Fat Quarter Shop has been around. 17 years. 17 years. Okay. Um, other popular question has been, uh, how did you guys come up with the name Fat Quarter Shop? She came up with it 100%. Mm -hmm. um, she, when we first started, um, it was, that's all we sold was Fat Quarter Bundles. Yeah, I just, I never could find Fat Quarter Bundles, so I just wanted to have Fat Quarter Bundles, and that's all we sold for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we didn't sell yardage for a long, a long time, time because for one, we were in our home and there was no room to like store it or like roll it and cut it. I don't even think we, we didn't have a cutting table. Yeah, we did. We had a cutting table but after a little bit. it was my personal table. And we would cut fat quarter bundles mm -hmm. at that table. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we weren't really selling yardage. We would cut our own bundles then, which is, you know, one of the things that we were doing sort of unique from the beginning is we were making bundles of every collection that we, you know, that we possibly could. Um, and then the pre-cuts, rest of the different pre-cuts came later, but, um, but yeah, it was 100% hurt. Okay. Um, from Kristen Jackson, with Fat Quarter Shop being a family business, do you think your children would be interested in carrying it on with it in future years? I really don't know. Um, it would depend obviously on what their interests are. They aren't, I wouldn't say they're not expected to. I'm not going to put pressure on them too. If they want to, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would never force them to do something they don't want to do. And the second thing is, you know, if I don't trust them or I don't think they'll do, I'm not going to, if I don't think they'll do a good job, I, I would not let them do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, I mean, I've seen a lot of companies that get run into the ground by sons, daughters, you know, brother, sister, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, if I could say, okay, in five to ten years, the company would be in good hands, I wouldn't let them take it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's wise. Um, from Miesia Osby, what advice would you give to the husbands of quilters? <laughs> um, I don't know. I would think that it's, um, you know, first off, it keeps your wife busy. It's a great hobby. <laughs> you know, I mean... Um, it's better than 
you know, just sitting around watching TV all day or, you know, uh, playing on social media or any of that kind of stuff, you know, it's, it's a, a great hobby to have. It's, you know, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of, um, you know, thinking, depending on what you're doing. It's very precise. I mean, it's a, it's a skill. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's something to be I'm, uh, admired for, for doing. I mean, it's, um, um, you know, I would probably give the advice that, um, you know, she has this sewing machine that is so loud. She has a Juki. <laughs> and it sounds it. like a jet engine. <laughs> and my office at home is next to her room. And so I have to go in there and shut the, like, if she doesn't have the door closed, I go shut it because <laughs> it is so loud. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I that. sew really fast, so they're not mm -hmm. always that loud. It's because I hit the, I mean, I go all the way to the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from Marcia Sturk. Uh, oh, also, lots of people have been asking the same question. Um, how many employees do you have? We don't say. We don't really say, but it's a lot. And um, yeah, that's I, it. I always tell people it's a Krabby Patty secret. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're not trying to be rude about it. We just. You know, yeah. it's just sort of personal company information, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a few questions about the kids. Uh, how do the kids end up with red hair? Uh, well, it, my hair might not look like it. When I was a kid, I had a lot of my hair was red. Oh. And um, her mom has red hair. Just and my hair mom's mom family. had red hair. So it's sort of on both sides of the family, but since. I'm the father, I sort of take more credit for it. Her mom yeah. thinks it's like 100% her, uh -huh. but you know, she didn't see a picture of me when I was 10. <laughs> and then, um, who decided to have four children? <clears throat> or was it a mutual choice? Um, well, I always hoped to have three, but then we had twins. Oh. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I would have more probably. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah. They are very awesome kids. Um, lots of people are asking uh, who your favorite guitarists are. Um, right now I would say like Joe Bonamassa is a big one. Okay. Always love Eric Johnson. I saw him one time. I saw Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson lives here in Austin and we went to a, a a Chinese restaurant, right? Yeah, went to a was? Chinese restaurant. And I said, I saw him a second time too that you don't know about. But uh, but we went to the restaurant and I said, Kimberly, that's a really famous guitarist over there. I, I mean, you know, you're never 100% sure. But mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. like, that's got to be him. I just sort of saw him. He was standing up and I was, I think we were getting seated. So it was when we first got there and I was like, that's a very famous guitar player. <laughs> I mean, like really famous. Like at this point, I would say legendary. And so I was like, oh, wow, big deal. And she was like, I have no idea who that guy is. <laughs> I was just like, whatever. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Um, we have lots of sweet comments coming in the chat, so I'm going to make sure to save them so I can show you all later. Um, but one of them was from Marcy Henron, who said, can you two be any more awesome? Aw, thanks. Very awesome people. Okay. Uh, let me start through all the questions here. Uh, Kathy Oshaya said, Kevin, you are a trooper for coming on in the live. Thank you, Kevin, for doing this. Uh, okay. And from a uh, few people were also asking, will you ever open the quilt shop to the public? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Pam Morrow, does Kevin go to the fabric shows? Oh, yeah. Yes. All of them. Yep. He's only missed one, and I've missed a Two? couple. Two. I missed when I had kids. I, I missed. That's it. Mm -hmm. He likes it. He just doesn't like it when people chase him down and say, Mr. Fat Quarter! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or Mr. Kimberly. He doesn't like Mr. that. Mr. Kimberly. Oh. <laughs> um, from Deborah Henderson, why do you love Christmas so much? I don't know. It's all about the kids. Oh. I mean, that's the... Um, to see them happy and excited and Christmas morning. I mean... I don't care if I get anything. I don't need anything. It's 100% about them. And if they're happy and Christmas morning is like the best day of the year. So 100% kids. Yeah. 
from Rafael Guy, the guitar, so cool. Do you ever serenade Kimberly? No. No. <laughs> I don't play for anyone but myself. <laughs> Ooh. I like that. It's like it's for you. Yep. Uh, I guess that answers a lot of people. We're also asking if they you would play on live stream at some point. Oh, no. Oh, no way. No way. Never. <laughs> no. I played in high school. I played in a couple, like... Uh, um, talent shows. Talent shows and, like, actually at a couple parties and stuff. And... I was not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable like up in front of people at all. So I was like not quickly learned I was not for that. Mm -hmm. All right, from Stitch by Stitch, Kevin, are you thinking how does Kimberly do these live streams? I would be so nervous. It's amazing. I mean, it really is. I mean, it, I could never do this, you know. And um, the way she does it, and I hope people also appreciate that you know, some days she doesn't feel great. Some days we have kids sick or um, things going on personally, or, you know, she comes here and there's immediately a big issue and maybe it's, you know, stressful and she still comes and is positive and, you know, um, tries to share all the things with everyone. And um, no, I think it's, I mean, it's incredibly, and the, the big thing also is they're live streams they're not videos i mean when you do videos you can stop start edit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know change stuff come back refilm pieces mm -hmm. you know a live stream is i mean this is like 100 percent her yeah. i mean you can't i mean if she says something stupid she says something stupid you know <laughs> what i mean like it's that's part of the deal i mean she's not like you know you know faking it i mean it's it's i mean there's a lot, I mean, live is different than a video. And so this is like a whole other level of stuff that, you know, she should be very proud of. And there's also, you know, like at home, like I do a lot of stuff at home to be able to bring stuff and all our employees, mm -hmm. like appreciate all the employees who sew for all of these things. Like, it's not just me doing all this. Like there's so many people behind the scenes, sewing stuff, designing free stuff, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that we take pride in is always providing so many free patterns so that, you know, you don't even have to buy from us. You can just sit and if you're at home on a Saturday and it's like Saturday morning and you're like, I need a free pattern, we have it. So we're always trying to give back, not just to charities, but to customers and just something to inspire you in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just gonna ask a few more questions here um, from Charlotte Walker. Kevin, there is not a day goes by that I don't check the daily deal. What's your process for deciding what items you choose? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Um, it's difficult and it's painful. <laughs> um, um, I would say that um, first off we have to have enough inventory and lately it's been difficult because um, with everything that's going on in the world a lot of fabric you know deliveries and all that kind of stuff is really uncertain and sort of unstable. So, um, you know, you may expect something and it's not here or, um, you know, you have to work around a lot of different things. So, um, you know, including everything from whether the fabric's here to, you know, in the warehouse, what can we handle at different certain times? Cause we, we you know, I try not to overload them. You know, you have to work with them. There's people that have to fulfill these orders and work behind the scenes. So. Uh, their workload and how they're feeling is a consideration and everything and so um, you know uh, I honestly don't enjoy it it's very difficult and it takes a lot of time too and he has a whole booklet that he keeps notes in and orders certain stuff and one day I would love to let someone else do that that's one of those jobs you know over the years you have to do everything but then there's certain I don't really measure um, our progress sometimes in like whatever we, how much we're selling or anything like that. I measure it in terms of when I can, when we sort of uh, delegate or pass down responsibilities or jobs or like the first person we, time we hired a marketing person or first time we hired a, a, a videographer, <laughs> first time we hired a photographer, you know, all these different pieces are, are more of the ways I think and so um, first time we hired an HR person was huge because I did that job for years. It's very difficult. And, um, and so, you know, this first time we hired a warehouse manager, 
that was like a wonderful day because <laughs> I did that job, you know, for uh -huh. the first however many years, and that's very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, that's sort of the way I, I, I view things. And, um, and uh, I forgot your original question. About flash sales. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I hope one day that could be another milestone moment. <laughs> yeah. So I can pass that job down to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> All right, from Heather Grants, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start an online quilt shop in the next 10 years or so? <laughs> uh, it's difficult, and you better be ready to work. I mean, you We used know, to work 120 hours a week. We used to work for years. We worked seven days a week, 8 a.m. to midnight, and I'm not joking. And for up until the day before our daughter was born, like the night before we were working and then the next morning at 6 a.m. she had our first daughter. So there were years where we really didn't go on any vacations. We had no social life. We spent 100% of our time together and obviously we hired some people along the way who we are totally indebted to to this day. And a lot of them still work for us. Yes, mm -hmm. those people are family. And, um, sorry. <laughs> Oh, sorry, those people are important. Yeah. Um, but, um, but no, I mean, you have to be ready to work. I mean, you're gonna get out of it. You might get out of it what you put into it, but if you don't put anything into it, I mean, you can't work 10 to four and expect to really be successful. I mean, there's a lot of people that wanna do it. A lot of stuff is very difficult, um, you know. So, I mean, you have to be 100% committed and passionate about it or you and I, but also I think that's true with whatever you do in life and you know whether your job hobbies or whatever I mean if you're not a hundred percent you're not going to get you know close to a hundred percent out of it yeah. oh. um, from Susan Lent uh, Kimberly Kevin and Fat Quarter Shop thank you for creating jobs and keeping keeping so many people employed around the world and I have to say thank you obviously for employing me for creating this amazing company to work for. Uh, from Melanie Summer Folk, I have a question. I've been doing the designer mystery since 2008. Whose idea was this and how did it come about? So I came up with that idea. I wanted something similar to quilt shops where like, you know, 17 years ago, you would walk in and you would get a $5 block. And if you went every month on this, on a certain day, you would get a block for $5. So I wanted something where you could do the program at an inexpensive way and you didn't have to buy the finishing kit or the backing. You could just get the blocks. So that's, I came up with it in 2008. So that's how many years. So I guess that was nine years ago. Oh, yeah, she's been doing it from the original time. Uh, from Jean Ginger, are you celebrities in your hometown? No. <laughs> no. She's been recognized places, um, airports. One time yeah. one of our kids peed on himself and we were getting on the plane <laughs> and um, a lady recognized me and I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> she said, are you, I think she thought I was a, what'd she say? I think she thought I was a news anchor because she couldn't connect the two. And I was like, oh, I quilt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. From Vir Virginia Bovier, uh, good morning. What do you envision yourselves doing in retirement? <clears throat> Working. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I don't. My father uh, retired, he's 80 now? He's more than 80. He's 81, 82, 82 81 or 82. Yeah. He's busier now than he was when he worked. I mean, he does. Teaches at a. Teaches at a local like college. community college. You know, subjects like he just taught himself. He. Um, teaches Spanish. Teaches Spanish. Teach, was teaching a Spanish class, teaching a history class. Wow. I mean, he doesn't need to do that. And he does like um, Boy Scout stuff where I, like real deal, like out in the wilderness stuff, like crazy stuff where I'm like, oh, I wouldn't even do that at my age. Yep. So, I mean, he's. Uh, he can't sit still for 20 minutes and so I'm not expecting to ever I mean I'm not retiring and sitting on a porch no looking at the sunset that's not <laughs> I won't be doing that yeah I don't even think we would enjoy that yeah that's not no good. yeah that's just not, not our personality <clears throat> yeah all right um so thank you Kevin for coming on here we have more questions but they're um more about like 
is this thing in stock? What are we doing? What's okay. that kind of stuff? Um, so as Angela Eves put it, oh my goodness, let the poor man go. Thank you for coming on, though. You two are cuties. Thank you. I did want to let you guys know that um, we were featured on all of us, including all of you guys who donated yes. on CBS Fox Austin. We put a link below and I would love for you to watch it because it features Avery, which is our first little girl that we were able to grant a wish to this year. So if you want to see the impact of your donations, please go there. And if you would love to donate again, if we get to 55,000 by Monday, we will go up to 25,000. And don't forget, Moda is also giving 10,000. So um, just have a great weekend. Can, can and I say something real quick? Oh, sorry. About the Make-A-Wish thing. I would just, from my perspective, say thank you to everyone who's contributed, been a part of that, and does you know, anything to support that. Um, and I would just let everyone know that we've met all the people that we've been able to support, all the kids and the families, and they're awesome kids and they're awesome families. So don't ever feel like, you know, what am I, reporting or whatever I mean I've been so uh, proud and, and excited to meet all the people and their good families their good kids that just have had bad things happen to them and um, the kids are amazing and they're appreciative and the families are appreciative so um, you know I can't say enough about the program and all the people involved there and what we're able to do is, is awesome yeah. um, we do have new members and super chats I want to go through okay before we sign off there's a lot um, super chat from Valerie Bauer for 1999. Uh, thank you, Valerie. Thank uh, you. So, Kevin, this is what we do for a super chat. Oh, wait. He oh, he doesn't it. see it. Look. I know, I know what. Piggy, oh, you know what it is. Piggy, okay. go, piggy. This old piggy, yeah. Piggy, piggy, piggy. <laughs> Nobody asked him if he likes piggy. <laughs> <clears throat> do you like piggy? Uh, he's okay. <laughs> I don't really have much to do with him, and he doesn't really bother me, so I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, new member, Jess Burler. Welcome, Jess. Another new member, Caroline Alexander. Welcome, Caroline. And then we had a super chat from Kathy Brock for 1999. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. They're super piggy. Next super chat was for 1499 from Angela Eves. Thank you, Angela. Ooh, sorry, there goes super piggy for Angela. Okay. And from Searles Mercy, a super chat for fifty dollars. Um, oh my goodness! Thank you. And they say. Uh, children are truly a gift. This is such a great cause for them. I believe in this. Thank you for your shop, for starting your shop. I love watching F Fat Quarter Shop and Floss Tube on YouTube. I love Kimberly, very down to earth, and the Fat Quarter Shop, your number one fan, Lucinda. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lucinda. And from Susie Clary, super chat for $99.99. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. That's super generous. That is amazing and super generous. Uh, yeah, couldn't be more thankful. Uh, super chat from Sonia Bowers for $5. Thank, Thank you. you, Sonia. And last but certainly not least, new member, Sue Shive. Welcome, Sue. And Confetti Cannon, when Super Piggy flies off for Sue. All right. Thank you, guys. So have a great weekend and have fun sewing this weekend. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks again for joining us, Kevin.